This is a small segment on how to prepare your sample for use in the Xenoleth fluoride machine. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the Xenoleth fluoride is load dependent. So, whenever you put a sample in there, you want to minimize the amount of exposed silicon and just focus on whatever you're trying to etch. As you notice here, I taped around the entire edge of all three chips. This is because on the edge right here, there is silicon and I want to make sure that's not exposed. You'll notice I did not tape to the edge. I'm trying to etch this little, this little square here. The edge actually is silicon dioxide that's been thermally grown, so it's a good mask for this machine. So we don't have to tape so precise, just enough to cover the edges. Also notice that I use a glass substrate to hold all three chips. This is useful for two reasons. One, glass is not as attacked as much as silicon and xenoleth fluoride. Two, this makes it very easy to pick up this sample and place it in the chamber quickly and also remove it from the chamber quickly. This is important because we want to minimize the amount of moisture that gets absorbed into the chamber. So by having a sample that's quickly loaded and unloaded, you can minimize the amount of moisture that's put it into the chamber. Now, earlier I showed you how to prepare a sample for our Xenoleth fluoride machine. This is a sample that's been run through the machine and I wanted to point out a couple of things about this. As you can see, this middle device here looks a little different from the left and right. That's because it's etched a little more than the other samples. And that's something I want to point out, that some of your samples might etch a little faster than others depending on how your processes were in the previous steps. So, if you use this through our STS machine for instance, a chip that was on the side of the wafer will have etched a little more than the ones in the center. So you want to keep that in mind that some chips will etch faster than others. So if you're trying to plan to etch this chip here, you might over etch this one in the process. So be aware of that. Also I want to talk about the etch speeds and the surface topography that occurs in the etch speeds. Now in general, if you etch faster, that is you have high etching pressure and low cycle duration, you're going to have a rougher surface. It's going to be really jagged looking. Conversely, if you have a lower pressure and you have a longer cycle, you're going to have a smoother surface. So keep this in mind. For most people, it doesn't matter that much because many people in our facility just try to clear silicon for something else. But if you want to control the, the texture on your surface, bear in mind that you may want to etch slower for smoother surfaces. And also, a slower etch lets you control it better as well. You can catch a mistake like this before it happens. See, if I had kept this going on a high etch, I would over etch this guy before these ones finish. And that'd be bad because I'd lose a sample. If I etch slower, I can take slower steps and be more careful to avoid this kind of problem.